Last time, we set up NED Framework and we implemented our DB context, which has three DB sets for our three database tables. And then we registered our DB context in our startup.cs. So we can now use this DB context all throughout our application now. And finally, we generated our database. So we have this school.db. Let's just jump right into this and start integrating our GraphQL queries and mutations with our database access. So to kick things off, I'm going to head into my services folder. And first off, let's put another folder in here. This is going to be called courses. And I was debating how I wanted to do this. So you could just inject your DB context directly into your GraphQL schema. So we just have it here and use it down here to get our data. But I think I do want a layer on top of the DB context just to have a little bit more separation between NED framework and our GraphQL schema. So I'm going to have a repository actually. I was thinking about doing some like CQRS jazz, but I think I want to keep this as simple as possible while keeping things separate. So this is going to be the courses repository. So let's create that. And most importantly, our courses repository is going to need to access our DB context. So you might think we just specify our school DB context here like that as the type, but in our startup.cs, we actually registered a pooled DB context factory. So we actually need an I DB context factory here. So import that from any of the framework core. And the type here is of course our school DB context. And using the DB context factory just ensures that we get a new DB context instance. So we won't have to worry about any NED framework concurrency issues when our GraphQL resolvers run in parallel. And the pooled part of the DB context factory just means that our DB contexts are going to be pooled for reuse as we see in these docs right here. So we can inject this through the constructor generate that and i'm actually going to start with mutations because if i started with the queries it wouldn't be that exciting to test out because right now we have no data in our database so first we have to get data in there so we're going to have to be able to create a course so let's make this async and we're actually just going to return a course dto here so i know repositories shouldn't return dto's they should return domain objects but we don't really have a domain layer right now and i don't feel like adding one would really add much benefit to this tutorial. Just want to keep things simple. I don't want to add a third layer here. Just want to focus on NED framework and GraphQL. So this is going to be for creating a course. So we'll just call it create. It's going to take in the course DTO that we want to create. And starting this off, we're going to have to create our DB context. So we're going to take our context factory and get back a school DB context. So using our factory, we can create a DB context and we can just take that context and we are going to add our course DTO. Actually, I like to get into the course DB set first. So take the courses DB set and add a course. And then we're just going to take our DB context and save these changes async. So actually write that course to the database. Let's make sure we await that. And finally, I am just going to return the course when we're done. And when we return the course, it should have the course ID generated, but that should be good for creating. Let's just move along here. Let's do an update as well. So we're going to have another method here. We'll return a course DTO again. We'll call this update and this will take in our course DTO as the previous method did. And same kind of thing. We're going to use our DB context again. So I'm just going to copy all of this from the create method. And instead of adding the course, we're going to call update and then save our changes. And then finally, I'm just going to copy this entire method. Lastly, we're going to have a delete. And I believe for deletes, all we get is the ID. So that's the only parameter we're going to take in here. We're also just going to return a Boolean. So true or false for success. And deletes are kind of weird in NED framework when we're in this disconnected scenario. So we're creating a new DB context. What we actually do is we create the course DTO. So let's instantiate that. And then we set the ID to the ID of the course we want to delete. We don't need any other data. We just need to set the primary key. And then we take that course and we remove it from our courses DB set. And then we just save changes. So save changes async returns an integer for the number of state entries written to the database. 
So if this is greater than zero, then that means our delete was successful. So we'll just return that. That'll be our Boolean true false. And now we're ready to integrate all this with our GraphQL mutations. First, actually, we're going to have to register our courses repository in our services. So we're going to take our services and we're going to add this as scoped. So we get a new repository per request to our web server and just register the courses repository. So there we go. We can now use this in our mutation type. So instead of this in memory list, we are going to have our courses repository and we can just inject that through the constructor and get rid of this old constructor. And now for the fun part, let's start using our repository. So we're going to take our courses repository and this is for create course. So we're going to call create and we need to pass in a course DTO. So this is the fun part. We got to map our course type input to a course DTO. So import our DTO and instantiate our course DTO. And now we just have to set all the properties on our course DTO to the properties on our course type input that we passed in. So the name is on the course input. So grab that. We also have the subject from our course input. And lastly, what else do we have on the course input? We have an instructor ID so we can set that. So there we go. Got that mapping. This is why I did not have a domain layer because then that would be another layer that we'd have to map to. So one less layer by skipping that and just focusing on any of the framework and GraphQL. But let's pass our course DTO to our repository to create it. And this gives us back our created course DTO, which is the same instance, but I'm just going to put it into our course DTO variable. And now we have to map our course DTO to our course result. So for the ID, we can snag that off the course DTO, the newly generated ID, and we can also get the name, the subject and the instructor ID as well. And now we no longer have our courses in memory list, so we can just delete that. And we should be good for creating a course and saving it to our database. Hooray. So moving on the update course, what we actually do here is we check if the course exists or not. And if it doesn't exist, then we throw this exception because we can't update a course if it doesn't exist. So we could actually query our database to check if the course exists. But I think coming into our courses repository here, I think trying to save changes after specifying an entity to update will actually throw an exception if the entity does not exist. So we're going to find out. But heading back into our mutation, let's just go ahead and remove all of this. And same thing as before, we're going to have to map our course type input to our DTO. So I'm just going to copy this. You could move this into like a mapper method or even better, you could install auto mapper and do all of this automatically, which I might actually do in the future. So we got the mapping. We are also going to have to map the ID that we pass in from this parameter to our ID on our DTO. So we know which course to update, but now we can take our courses repository and update our course DTO, which also gives us back our course DTO, which is actually the same instance. So this really isn't necessary in this case, but we can now map the course DTO to our course result. So again, same exact mapping, but let's go ahead and do that and get rid of all this down here. And then we return the course. So that should all be good. And then finally deleting a course, I think all we have to do is take our repository. We're gonna have to make this method async now since we're using our database, but we can just take our courses repository and call it delete with our course ID that we pass in. So no mapping necessary. That is great. I know one issue I noticed right off the bat is that we have this instructor ID that we pass in and currently our database has no instructors and we don't have a mutation to create an instructor. We'll add queries and mutations for instructors and students down the road. But anyways, let's head into our database. And I used to have an extension to mess around with SQLite databases in Visual Studio. I no longer have it. So let's go ahead and manage extensions. We'll search for SQLite and we want the SQLite and SQL Server compact toolbox. Let's download that. I'll have to restart Visual Studio BRB. All right, got that installed. We're back. Now let's head into this server explorer, I think. Yep, here we go. So right here, we got these little blue databases here, the SQLite SQL Server compact toolbox. So click that 
and we want to add a SQLite connection. And all right, this looks kind of complicated. I think add SQLite and SQL combat connections from current solution. That looks helpful. So if we do that, boom, here we go. School DB pops it right up. Let's look at the tables. Let's go to instructors and let's edit the top 200 rows. So we'll just throw an instructor in here. This will be singleton Sean with a salary of 50 and we can confirm that. Oh, and it wouldn't generate an ID for us. That is not cool. All right, let me just grab one. So I would just grab this ID right here, but our ID that we save in the database does have to have the dashes that an actual GUID has. So let me put a break point right here and then execute this and we'll just grab the id from right here so copy that and head back into our table and paste that as the id and also our id has to be all uppercase so let's go ahead and fix that so uppercase b just all of these letters so case sensitivity does matter or else this is not going to work so hopefully we don't miss any. You could also just grab a GUID off the internet if you want so that you don't have to go through this pain, which I probably should have just done. But we'll just go ahead and wrap this up and save this. There we go. So looking at our courses table as well, this is empty right now. Let's go ahead and run this. So execute this. We hit our breakpoint and we successfully created our course and we get our created course ID back. We can also get the name of the course back as well and the subject so let's create another course we'll call this one about geometry so create that same instructor id because we only have one instructor and there we go looks good we get our data so now for updating a course let's grab the id of the course we just created and paste that in our update course mutation looks like we got the right instructor id for the one instructor we have we got a new name and a new subject let's update and there we go new data and let me just make sure that was reflected in our courses table so let's refresh that and there we go we got chemistry and the subject of one which is science so let's go ahead and delete that course so here's the course id that we used to update let's head into delete do i have a delete in here i don't think i do all right let's create a new document this is a mutation to delete a course and the id we pass that in and here we go. Delete course was true. Let's try it again. And oh, we get an exception. And that was because we didn't affect any rows because there was nothing to delete. So all we could do here is wrap our delete and a try catch. And if we got an exception, we'll just return false. So we are catching all exceptions here, not just exceptions for the course that we tried to delete not existing. But I think this will be sufficient for now. So now we can move on to our query types. We verified all of our mutations worked. So we want to use our repository for getting courses and getting a course by ID. So back in our repository, let's create those two methods. So I'm just going to copy my create method. So I have my context factory all set up. So this is going to be a get all and it's going to return an I enumerable of courses and no parameters here. And all we're going to do is take the courses from our context and do a little to list async. So actually grab all the courses and we'll have to await this. And then similar thing for getting a course by ID. Let's actually rename this method to that. So get by ID. We're going to get the course ID passed in. We're going to return a single course DTO. Course ID is the primary key. So we can use find async and just pass in the primary key. So that should be it for the queries. Let's head back into our query type. Let's get rid of all of this bogus stuff. Like literally it's bogus because that's the name of the package. But anyways, let's get our repository in here, the courses repository and inject that through the constructor. And now for getting all the courses, we're gonna make this async first because we're hitting our database. And all we have to do is take our courses repository and get all the courses and i was wrong that's not all we have to do because we have to map our dtos to our course type for our graphql schema so let's get the dtos first but anyways we can take our course dtos and map them using select so take each course dto and map to a course type so we can grab the id from our course dto and also the name the subject grab those from the dto students we have not done anything with students we don't 
even like have any of that data in the database. We don't have any queries or mutations for them. So we're just going to leave that off for now. But for instructor, I am going to grab that. So we're going to have to map our instructor on our DTO to our instructor type. So the ID again is from our course DTO has an instructor DTO and grab the ID there. And then I think we got four other fields here. So first name, last name and salary. And that should all be good. So the last thing we have to do, we're going to have to head back into our repository. I just realized, but now for get course by ID, we can get rid of all this and we're going to take our courses repository and get by ID for the ID that we want. That'll give us back a course DTO and then same kind of mapping. So I'm just going to copy this and now I rename this variable all throughout here. And now I will mention why this will actually not work. And the reason is because we're getting data from this instructor on our DTO, but our course DTO is not going to have the instructor loaded. And the reason it's not going to have it loaded is because any framework isn't going to do that join on the instructors table by default. So we have to actually specify that here with an include. So we will tell our query to include the course instructor. So it'll actually do that join on the instructor table and load the instructor data into our DTO. And same thing for get by ID, we wanna include the instructor. And I actually didn't know that. So once you do includes, you can't use find anymore. So we have to go back to first or default async. Uh, that's fine with me. So open this up and we want the first course where the ID of the course matches the ID that we pass into the method. I guess while we're here, we can also include our students, even though we have no data in our students table, but that should be good. Down the road, we'll have some data in there. So now this should work. Let's start this up. So we tested all of our mutations. Let's test our queries and there we go. So we get all of our course data and we get our instructor that we had just created. And we also get null for students because we have none. So course by ID, let's grab this course ID and paste that in there. And there we go. We get our data back. So we have successfully connected to a database. We first off created our courses repository, got all of our mutation methods in here and integrated with our mutation type on our GraphQL schema. And then we came back and implemented our queries where we also had to include our nested data. And then we integrated our repository with our query type. And along the way, throughout our queries and mutations, we did all of this mapping where I would rather just set up auto mapper. But anyways, hopefully you can use this to integrate a database with your own GraphQL API with hot chocolate. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.